Peter, let's, let's dive right in here. Um, the, this conflict which started, this war which started in February 24th has been a strain on the entire world, certainly on Europe and of course its most populous, most affluent member, Germany. Uh, particularly with a new government in place uh, since December, uh, which was confronted with this war right away. Um, Germany has been somewhat criticized uh, in Europe, but also beyond for not doing enough, for not stepping up to the plate, for not sending the necessary equipment uh, that Ukraine needs. Give us a sense from Berlin, the view from Berlin at this particular moment. Thank you very much. Uh, delighted to be here also with this uh, exceptional panel. So to your question, um, yes, uh, now, uh, by the way, I'm now in the opposition because we lost, um, <laughs> so I'm not the transatlantic coordinator anymore. That was a government position that I enjoyed to have for four years. <coughs> but um, yeah, we are, we are like 10 months into this war and the German government certainly, like many others, never expected anything to happen like that, to have a on the ground, like conventional war in Europe. So nobody was really prepared. Although I have to admit uh, there was enough or sufficient intelligence months before that nobody really should have been surprised by the time of uh, February 24th that actually Russia invaded Ukraine. There was a lot of material, satellite and everything, pictures that we, that we had intelligence briefings on. So actually it's something like, well, surprise, surprise, uh, something. We woke up to a war by the end of uh, February this year. I don't buy that. But, you know, with the new German government just having come into office uh, just, just like two, three months after that, of course, it took them like completely uh, unprepared. And um, I think everybody needs to understand that apart from like political party issues that, that you know, um, as I said, I'm on the position now, I'm not part of that government anymore. Uh, we fully have to understand that for Germany, it was a completely uh, confrontation with everything with their core principles because we had we had to you know to make a decision to turn 180 degrees around with regard to deliver weapons at all be it normal weapons or heavy weaponry all the way up to battle tanks which we have not yet delivered by the way which I criticize my government of not doing enough in, in indeed but we had not we had one of the core principles was not to deliver any kind of weapons into any conflict or even war zone and with regard to our history in Ukraine of the in the Second World where we the, the, the German Wehrmacht back then the, the army killed millions of Ukrainians yes there it was difficult for us to first be they like to be the first ones to deliver weapons so um, you know in Ukraine to Ukraine but um, I don't buy that you know we're still lacking behind half a month half a year ago Six months ago, we should have made quick and the right political decisions like deliver, delivering heavy weaponry, deliver airspace defense, which we now did. But there's always this narrative that I keep hearing uh, and which actually my American friends were confronting me, me with earlier this week. I spent uh, three days earlier this week in, in Washington, D.C. and the administration, but also my, my friends on the Hill on both sides of U.S. Congress who were in session just a month after the midterm elections were asking me questions, do we have a German problem? Um, they appreciate that we are delivering now, but um, this narrative that, well, if we deliver the Leopard 2, which they desperately want, and I think they need the Ukrainians, where well, it takes a lot of training, maintenance, and all that, and ammunition, yes, that, that's exactly why we should have decided to deliver that um, uh, half a year ago, because we know it takes a lot of time. It's not easy, we, 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 we have that, that we, we have enough of these, ta of these battle tanks, which would, could make a difference in that war. And uh, let me finish now. Uh, never, we should never forget who caused all this. It, it's, it's, it's Putin's Russia. It's um, the Kremlin, with this dictator behind, hiding behind the Kremlin walls, who initiated this uh, completely unprovoked aggression against Ukraine. And you were quite right, Ali, when you, when you commented in your introductory remarks saying it is not only a, an aggression against uh, the Ukrainians, which would be bad enough, it's an aggression against all of us, at least uh, against those who believe 
in universal values like rule of law, democracy, human rights and all these things. So we are defending, or actually Ukrainians are defending on Ukrainian territory our core values. So for me, it's an absolutely no-brainer to make quick and right decisions and to support Ukraine as much as we can to bring them into a strong position. There cannot be peace negotiations now. So clear and very uh, stern words uh, from uh, Peter Bayer as far as the German perspective is concerned. Of course, we're here today to discuss uh, the, the uh, future of the European Union and European security after the Ukraine war. But